Hello, hello, hello. This is Kevin Epps here with Digital Brilliance Hour, hitting you with another tutorial. So let's get started. So in this tutorial, we're gonna go over projectiles. Um, there are two different types of ways of actually throwing projectiles from a model. And I'm going to go over both of those ways. I'm going to use our Ogres Mayhem project to show you how it's defined and how it's implemented. Right now I have OpenBOR Stats open and also Chrono Crash's website. We're gonna use both of these tools to figure out everything. So from here on out on a lot of these tutorials, I'm going to be speaking from the viewpoint of you knowing how to look up these answers um, I already have the beginner and intermediate courses up. So if you want to look those up to kind of get you up to this point, because you definitely need the fundamentals in order to fully understand the videos that I'll be doing from here on out. I know I started off pretty slow. Uh, I did that because, you know, it's very important to understand the inner workings of OpenBOR, the fundamentals before you start trying to do the the cool stuff the advanced techniques the, the the big things that you see on these highly complex games i'm still going to explain but just a different way it's not going to be as slow so okay first we're going to open up the wiki here so i'm gonna go ahead to the wiki i open up the legacy manual for now i i man i can't wait for this manual to be completed but anyway let's go to the legacy manual so this is the new version of the legacy manual. I think I had a vi video of the older manual, which has the same information as this. It's just used on a different platform. The first method of shooting projectiles is throw frame. So let's search for throw frame. See if, see how this goes. Ah, okay, so it does a little different. So let's go back to control F throw frame. So there's a throw frame weight. Projectiles. So here's a here's a whole section related to projectiles. So first you have to it and these in, are in relation to if we scroll up to show you if we scroll up here, these are in relation to, you know, we're seeing all of these sections, but what are all the, what are these commands and functions related to entities. So these are your model files. So these are the model files that all of these functions and commands and attributes can be applied to. So let's go back. So we have the uh, projectiles. So load. First off, if we just read all of these here, you have load. You have to actually, it's the same as the load.txt file where you either load or know a model. Load actually instantly loads it into the memory to be used. It's the same premise here. It actually needs to load a model to ensure that it's currently queued up in memory to be able to be used. So you have to load the, the actual model, which could be just a none type model as the projectile. And we'll, we'll see that example in uh, OpenBOR stats. So that's what load and throw frame, as we can see, uh, useful to load entities which are spawned by commands such as throw frame and spawn frame. In our case, projectiles is throw frames and we'll see. So you have load, knife, boomerang, star, bomb. They are different types of projectiles um i don't know if we looked into this yet but these are ways that these projectiles will behave and move basically so the knife goes in a straight path boomerang goes in the path and then comes back star is thrown at a diagonal from a jump and a bomb is tossed out like a grenade so it's gonna you know go in like a um curved throw yeah all right so let's go to throw frame now throw frame so these are done in your animation this would be a command that you would use in your animation so if you had an animation 
that's set to actually throw something or throw a projectile, this is where you would do it. And so you would actually specify the frame number of where this will be thrown. So if you have a frame that has like seven frames, uh, the frame count starts at zero, at zero to six, that equals seven frames. Let's say that we wanted the projectile to be cast at frame number five. Then we would say throw five. A is basically the height. So the Y value of where the projectile starts from the vantage point of the model. If you want the projectile to launch at a higher level, you use a higher number, lower level, lower number. Yeah, also have shoot frame, kind of the same thing with shot. There are also many different other frames here as well, like cuss frame and cuss knife, uh, shoot frame, very similar to throw frame. So that's one. This is one way to throw a projectile. The other is an actual function that can be used as a command. So if we go to projectile, let's search for that projectile. This is an engine defined function. I think we might have seen this in the manual video. So it actually even in the in the manual, it shows you how to actually use this command. So you have an ampersand command projectile, which is a function. These are your parameters for the function. So um, we'll explain each of these parameters. So you have relative relative is based on the actual model. So for instance, there's a, there's a difference between um, actually going to HTML speak here or CSS. So you can relatively relatively be compared to something or absolutely be compared to something. So for instance, in web development in CSS, you can apply a position to something relative to something else, or you can absolutely apply a position to something based on the overall view of the whole page. So the whole window is based on uh, the absolute positioning, or you can have a relative position based on another element. So uh, hopefully this helps understand what relative means. So when turned on, if set to one, turns on the relative flag, unless you use uh, zero, which turns it off. But relative means uh, this would be this would be positioned based on the model that's calling this function. Model itself, you have the relative to one. It positions itself based on uh, the position of the model. If it's at zero, it would base itself off of the position of the window. So it wouldn't care where the model was situated. It would be based on the window position and stage position. All right, so that's what relative is. Name is the name of the actual model that's loaded. You have to make sure you load it. It goes, uh, goes back to that load call or that load attribute. You have to make sure it's loaded to be able to, for it to be used. The X, Z, and Y, let's look down here, the X position, this is the left and right position. The Z is the back and forward. So uh, what I mean is uh, the, uh, the, the different layers or the 3D index, so that goes backwards and forward. So this window here versus this window. This window is in front of this window. This Z value has a higher Z value in this window, which is behind this window. So that is like the 3D space. So like facing forward uh, uh, based on a 3D forward space type mindset. That's what Z is based on. Uh, same, same rules apply with HTML, CSS as well. If you're a front end developer and know uh, HTML, CSS, same rules apply. Z index, same thing. Uh, y, Y is the up and down. That's the up and down. So you have the X, left and right, uh, left and right, Y, up and down, Z, back and forth. Okay, direction uh, determines which direction the projectile is gonna go in. Simple as that, left and right, up and down. Um, and 
one note, most of the like throw frame and shoot and boomerang, all of those different functions basically rely on this function. So if you want to use the more tailored function, it would, this would be it. This is the most optimized function to use for projectiles, FYI. Then you have the P type, you have the uh, projectile type. So again, it goes back to uh, the type. You got the shot, the boomerang, the knife, like all the different methods of how it gets shot is done in this parameter. Then you have the type, Again, same thing, type of behavior, and then the map. This is based on the, uh, the, the palette map. So if you have a different model which you're loading, do you want it to be based on the map of the actual entity or its own palette? So uh, that's, that's what these are used for. We'll see an example here. Again, here's an example here. I'll show you an example in OpenBOR stats and how it's loaded in the game. So now that we've gone over both of these, let's see these in practice. Now we have open BOR stats open up. I have Ogres Mayhem opened up. So first let's go to models and we're going to look at one of these enemies here. We're gonna start with throw frame. Look at one of the enemies that we have that has a throw frame. So let's scroll down here. A lot of them don't have it, so there we go. Got so uh, Soge King, all right. So we have Soge King. We see that we have uh, Bird loaded up, which is another model. We also have Bird loaded as a knife as well. And we'll also look at Bird so you can see what this model is in a second. All right. So we have it loaded here. He has one attack. So let's look at this attack. So here we have the throw frame. Throw frame is listed here. It's saying, it's saying that this projectile should be thrown at frame one, which would be this. Because again, frames start from zero, there's, there's six frames, so it'd be zero to five. So at frame one, which is actually frame two, that's where this will happen. That's where the bird will be thrown. That's why there's a sound applied to frame one because that's where the frame is being thrown and then at an altitude of 28. Okay, so let's look at bird. Open up bird here. So bird is a, uh, most projectiles have a model type of none. So anytime you see a projectile, chances are it's going to have a none model type. So let's go ahead and open up bird and see the default. The default animation is set to idle. And so here's the bird, here's a fire bird. So to animate. So that is, that is the projectile that's thrown by Soge King. And again, I'll show it in the game. I just want you to see how it's actually defined before seeing it in the actual game so it can make sense. All right, so that's one way. So now let's look at the projectile approach. So in order to do that, I have my players loaded up and we're gonna open up Yusuke to look at one of his projectiles. So we're gonna double click to open it up. I'm gonna make this a little larger. As we can see, there, there's some, some loading up here. There's a use case fire that's loaded up. Uh, is there anything else loaded up? No, there's, there's, there's nothing else loaded up. We'll see though. Actually, I may open up Sublime Text to show you something else too. But as of right now, only thing that's loaded up, uh, we'll go over transformations uh, later. But for right now, we're sticking on load. So let's go to, all right. So this is the spirit gun attack. So, uh, never mind all of this stuff. We'll go over that later. Here's the projectile at line 22. So, like I said, it looks just like how it looks here. The usage you have the at symbol command and the function, which is called projectile, and the different parameters. So, if we go back here, we'll see that there's the ampersand command projectile one which it means is relative the position is relative to this model you're going to launch the spirit gun model 
the x value is 55 uh, you want to have a z index of one which means it is going to launch in front of the model and then a y value of 36 uh, one this one remember if we come back here this next one here is the direction so the direction is from left to right so we'll go ahead and set this to one and then the rest it defaults to zero which is uh the shoot which is the going straight left to right so the direction is going to face the direction of your model so if your model is facing right it's going to shoot to the right if it's facing left it's going to shoot to the left same thing that happens here that's what the one is that's what the one value is zero is the same thing it just gives the behavior of the shot behavior is going to go from left to right let's look at spirit gun let's, let's look at the spirit gun model here one thing we noticed though right we don't see the spirit gun being loaded here so we need to see if it's loaded anywhere else in a second but before we do that let's go ahead and look at the model itself and again remember all of your projectiles will be in the none be listed as a model type of none so let's look for spirit gun in here see if we see it spirit gun here we go here's the spirit gun we have the idol here if we want to animate what it does so there you go so that's the spirit gun okay let's go ahead and uh end this here close this out to show one thing before we actually run the game here we go so let's look at remember i said there are two ways to load in models you can either load them in the model file or you can load them in the models.txt we didn't see it in the model file of use case so let's go to models.txt and see if it's there so open that up i'm actually just going to do a search for it ah see that's why we didn't have to load it it was already loaded into the memory. We didn't use the no method, we used the load. So that loaded this into the memory. All right, so that's why we didn't have to do that in the use case model. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and run this. Uh, we're gonna first show, the first one is the Soge King, and he is conveniently in stage four, I believe, four one. Let's load that up. I'll just go ahead and choose Yusuke too, although I'm going to show him in a different way. We got to get to the end of this stage in order to see him. So I'm just going to run through this really quick. And actually, let's see if I... So there's the, there's the, uh, there's the spirit gun, as you can see. I can only launch it when his MP bar is full. So now I'm able to launch that back. And again, he used, sorry, okay. He used the projectile function to launch his. So if we do it again, That's a powerful move though. All right, now we'll start to see those Soge Kings, which are annoying, but you'll see them. As you can see, see there, <laughs> Let me get out. <laughs> yeah, cause they tear you up. <laughs> All right, but you were able to see them, right? See, they're, they're, oops. All right, so that's how, let's go ahead and get rid of them. All right, we'll stop it here. So yeah. So we're able to see how he launches the bird, the firebird, 
and we were also able to see how Yusuke launches his spirit gun so we were able to see it run in the game that's how it looks uh, you're able to see how the code responds to how it gets loaded in the game so those are those are two ways that you can use projectiles in the game so one more note if you are ever confused about what a certain command is remember the manual is your friend and also this help area over here which lets you know what these different commands do so if you ever see a command and you don't know what it does make sure to use both the help helpful hint and the mangle all right guys so hopefully this was helpful for you let me know if you have any other questions or concerns and i'll get right to it and uh, you have a great rest of your day and stay brilliant peace we hope you're learning what you can from these free tutorials. Again, if you feel you need more in-depth or extensive services or extra help with learning and getting the most out of this and don't want to wait on the videos, please feel free to join our DBH community for only $5. That doesn't mean you can't ask questions on here though. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to post those. Like and share this playlist for those who may need it. At the end of the day, we just want to help people build their engineering and coding skills to be efficient wherever they want to go. I'm Kevin. Appreciate you watching and be brilliant. Peace.